Range is one of the hottest topics for electric vehicles. The media loves to think that range anxiety is the reason why most people don't buy EVs. What we've heard on the road would seem to be that it's lack of availability is why people are buying EVs, but whatever. One thing that does come up on forums of EV owners a lot is people talking about their range dropping after a little while of owning the vehicle. And I want to talk about that a little bit because they're not 100% right, really. You know, that their range isn't dropping dramatically suddenly when they get the car. What they're referring to is the range estimation on their car. It's this little dial right here. Some people colloquially refer to it as the guessimeter. The guessimeter is a range estimate based on your driving history, the current driving conditions, other variables that I may not know about, uh, and, and so how far they you might be able to get on a current charge. The third number you see is the percentage of battery remaining, and that's super useful because it's an actual measure of how much battery you are remaining. So on each of these four legs, first Tucson, north of Phoenix, and then Phoenix Flagstaff, Flagstaff to Gallup, New Mexico, Gallup to Albuquerque, there's a measure of what our estimate range was at the beginning, and what that would imply the battery's total potential was, what our range estimate was at the end, and what that would imply the battery estimate to be, and then the real-world driving data, and what that implies the total potential range of the car is. So I'll take a look at each of those for each of these legs, and I'll come back to you throughout the video, and we can talk about those. Alright, we are leaving Tucson where we had a really special time with Dale, Weldon's dad, and Carlene, his partner, and um, it was really fun sharing Linden with them and very relaxing actually. Uh, you know, we've got the normal background things of Weldon working and uh, um, just not knowing what the future holds, but otherwise really relaxing, and uh, so we're having fun. I think by the time this is done, we're really gonna miss it. <laughs> it's really fun being on the road, actually. 147K till our first charging station. How you doing? You're doing well. We arrived at our first charger, down at 50% battery, 130 miles. Hey, future me, again, here to just talk a bit about that first leg. So that's from Tucson to just north of Phoenix. At the beginning, the range estimator said we had 234 miles of potential range on a 93% charge, which would imply the total potential of the battery, if it were 100%, is 251. At the end, we had 50% charge remaining, and the guestimeter said we had 130 mile range, which would imply that the total potential range of the battery is 260. However, we traveled 147 miles on 43% of the battery, which implies that the total potential range of the battery is actually 342 miles, if it were at 100%. And that far beats what this car is supposed to be able to do. So that's the real world data. The real world data is much better than what the the range estimate says on that one. So, all right, next leg. All right, an Electrify America plug and play just worked. Simple as. Spanish flatbreads with smoked salmon and smoked cheese. And Lyndon, less interested in his food and more interested in mom's. Yeah. <laughs> Lyndon. This might be the last time I try to eat and feed at the same time. <laughs> What can you tell us? What were you talking about just a minute ago? You were saying a lot. Okay, we're fueled. The car's up to 80%. Baby's fueled. And ready to go. Here's what it says. It says we have 232 range. 113 is what it'll take us to get there. Flagstaff in 30, 30 or so miles. Arrived in Flagstaff. The guessometer says we have 80 more miles available to us, 32% charge. Here again, let's talk about that Phoenix to Flagstaff. So 
we started. Estimate of 232 miles on an 80% battery, which implies a range of 290 miles. At the end, we had 80 mile estimated range on 32% charge, which implies the estimated range of the car, if it were 100% again, is 250 miles. But here's the thing, and this is the third number that is just different, right? We traveled 113 miles and used 48% of the battery to do that 113 miles, which would imply that the total potential range is only 235 miles of the car. Now, people see that and they say, oh my gosh, the car doesn't match up with its estimates. Well, Phoenix to Flagstaff is a big uphill. It's a big climb and we went from warm temperatures to cold temperatures. So the estimated range varies. Okay, so here at the Double Trees chargers, um, they listed as having three chargers. There's a GE charger um, for us. And then there's a couple of Tesla chargers, which I guess we could also try out because we have the adapter for those. Um, but let's see how this guy does. So we're in the room. The car is charging. We've added a couple of percent already. Or no, just, yeah, 2%. Um, it says it'll finish charging at something like in the middle of the night, which is fine. Free charger, you know, can't complain about that. Like imagine, imagine if hotels had like free gas. It's not gas though. Right, but it's still nuts. It's just like. Yeah, it does cost energy. Yeah, it does cost them something. It's just really cool. I mean, I, it's, you know, it feels, it feels pretty lush. So now it's three. <laughs> yeah. Well, but with more time than we have at any of our other previous stops. Yeah. yeah. So we kind of planned it that way. Um, you know, it's known as a cute little town. So we thought we'd take a little stroll through the downtown, see what it's like. Yeah. Lumber yard brewing company to enjoy a beer. Mac and cheese balls. Welcome to America. A hundred trains a day. Here's the second one we've seen in like five minutes. Not as big as the first one. It was single layer only, single level. Morning. Loading in the last of the things here in Flagstaff. Figured out a cool thing on the phone. Um, well, I guess it's actually the car, but the phone control in the car. We're able to set departure time and temperature, so set us up for a 7.30 departure, 7.50, um, but got the car nice and warm, so it's ready to roll. All right, let's go. And we've got, it says 188 miles to go, and the gesso meter thinks that we're at 258 of range on 100% charge. This is our longest uh, between charges stint, I think, that we'll have had which is pretty exciting. Okay, we got here with 79 miles estimated remaining, 33% charge, so our longest stretch was still plenty to go. Even if we'd only been at 80% this morning, we'd have been just fine. So here we are in Gallup. Linden getting a feed, car getting a charge. Okay, so we hit 80% here. Let's see here, touch to return. So total charge time was 28 minutes on that one. It cost us $8.33. Um, that took us to 80%. And you can see once it hits 80%, it drops down real slow, so it's now doing 11 kilowatts. Leg three of this, we're leaving Flagstaff with 100% charge. So the estimate 258 miles on the 100% charge is what it thinks the total car's potential range is. We went down to a 79 estimated range on 33% battery, which implies a 240 mile total potential range. However, Again, this is the real world data here. We use 67% of the battery to travel 188 miles, which would imply that the car's potential range on those driving conditions 
is 281 miles. Again, this is mostly very close to freezing. There's some, there's some climbing over this route and we're driving at highway speeds with the heater running and a mini fridge plugged in. But real world data there says 281 is really what the car's potential was in those conditions. 217 on the guestometer. 142 to go. As somebody settles in. There we go. 35% remaining and the guessometer says we have 92 miles of go juice on board. Um, but we're gonna stop here. Cause baby's done. Baby done. So this last leg was gallop to Albuquerque. We started with an 80% charge and an estimated range of 217 miles, which implies the total battery potential of 271. We ended up with an estimated range of 92 miles, 35% charge remaining, which implies that the battery's total potential is 263 miles of range at full. And then the real world data on this one is that we drove 142 miles and used 45% of the battery to do it, which it would imply a 315 mile range on the car. So this is our fourth stop at Electrify America stations at a Walmart. Okay, um, we got here. I plugged in straight away. I went into pee while Alana fed the baby. I came back. Baby was still feeding a little bit. I had a bit of a snack. Changed the baby. Alana is now peeing. And we've gone from 37%. We just hit 80%. Like... Yeah, man, if you're road tripping with a baby, like, charge time, nothing, you know? It's just, you're here and it's done. Okay, okay, we'll walk around. Family stop three, Santa Fe. We're here! So there you go. That's our experience driving uh, Tucson to Santa Fe and looking at the real-world driving data against the range estimates that we got from the car. So based on real-world data, in the best-case scenario, it would imply that the car's total potential range is 342 miles. The worst is... 235. Please check my math on this. If I've got something wrong, let me know in the comments or shoot me a tweet. Um, but really, the key message that I want to send to anyone watching this is just in the same way that you use a fuel gauge on a car to know when to fill up your tank, the same thing should be true about your battery, right? The range estimate is a useful tool to kind of give you a sense of, oh, how much further can I go? But really, Look at your current conditions, look at your current usage, you know, if it's cold, if you're running the heat a lot, or if it's hot and you're in the AC, and you've got a mini fridge like us, you've got a big load, whatever it may be, know that your rate is going to be different, and just look at when you need to charge based on the percentage of battery used. The total range estimate is super useful, super useful for planning like those long trips between chargers and how far you want to go. But in the end, it is only an estimate and you can't and shouldn't rely on it um, just because the conditions will change significantly the total distance available to you to travel. So that's my message. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Um, give a shout and stay tuned for our next leg as we uh, keep on driving around the western U.S. in a Ford Mustang Mach-E California Route 1 edition. Thanks.